Night, blankets, head shoots, almost unknown to the dwarves within. They lay asleep within the constant and gentle warmth of the land's rocky womb, so far from the bleak and uncaring sky. Yet even shielded by earth and stone, they toss and moan in their sleep as strange forces stir. Upon the blighted plains a foul wind springs from nowhere, shifting the bleached and brittle grass, whistling through twisting stones and claw-marked mountains. The hordes of undead animals turn their heads as one attentive. The bulging glassy spires of ever-burning obsidian flicker and smoke. The air shrieks in joy, in fear, in pain, as it tears dirt from the ground, swirling it, gathering it into the sky above the fortress's carved entrance in a massive black cloud. It bulges and swells, its almost solid mass hinting at impossible, at unspeakable geometries. It crashes and thunders, the skies themselves beating down upon Headshoot's door, pounding rhythmically the beat of ritual drums. All at once the shrieking storm descends, a single blackened finger curling down into the earth, tearing at the dead and graying soil, screaming in unearthly tones that resonate through earth and metal and into the buried halls of the dwarven dead. It gathers, coiling, coalescing above a single dusty sarcophagus. The ground trembles in terror, and dwarves throughout the fort wake with screams upon their lips as a portal tears a hole through the air and into a black, sucking void through which still darker shapes slither and writhe. The lid of the coffin is shattered as a single tendril of solid dark lashes out from the space between stars and wraps itself around and into the long-forgotten tomb. All at once the storm breaks, scattered as if by a hammer blow. A long silence strangles the fort, all within holding their breath and none knowing why? The only sound in all of Headshoot's twisting halls is the snapping, crackling, papery sound of long, desiccated flesh upon yellowing bone from within the halls of the dead as a gnarled hand reaches up and grabs the lip of the shattered coffin slowly moving in unnatural jerks and spasms a thin form raises itself up humanoid save for a missing head in a ponderous creaking caricature of motion it reaches down to lift up a bare and bleached skull whose eyes are filled with oily shadows dust pouring from its form ragged remnants of its skin snapping over suddenly moving bone it raises the skull above its empty shoulders and it howls <sighs> So begins Year Twelve, The Rule of Orange Soda. Fellow dwarves, I have arisen from the slumber of the dead to lead you in these troubled times. I bring with me knowledge that no mere mortal dwarf could ever acquire. I know the ways of ancestors and ancients, legends and kings of past. Tremble before my knowledge. I am unlike the undead monstrosities that wander the waste outside your walls. Um, 
e- even if I'm sort of a skeleton and-, and carrying my own head around. No, no, no. I am here to lead you by request of the gods themselves. So, so, okay, so that means you can quit chucking shit at me now? Yes, you, Hellioning, quit that. Toxic frog Uvarkal, mechanic, cancels drink, interrupted by skeletal rat man. Olesh Arto Bolon, tax collector, cancels drink, interrupted by skeletal rat man. Well, I, I, I guess first on the agenda is seeing what these two are freaking the hell out about. I mean, skeletal rat men? Okay, okay, wait wait a second here. Um, Oh, come on! They're both many, many levels below you, on a small cliff, and you have a champion between them and you. The two of you better stop being wusses. They don't like wusses in the afterlife! The afterlife! Second is, um, finding out what the hell happened to this place while I was dead. The entire fortress is a giant maze of large, empty rooms, twisting labyrinths, quarries, and stockpiles located in random hallways, large, random square pits and waterways. I mean, come on. This place is more confusing than the mountain homes after a bender. The hell's this place, anyway? Oh, uh, there's tag plastic. I thought everyone said he was dead or something, or at least missing. Same thing around here. Uh, anyways, this place is pretty awesome. I mean, there's biscuits and booze down here. Sure, I don't need to eat anymore being a, a skeleto walking corpse, but um, that doesn't mean I won't do it. How the fuck do I get out of here anyways? So, um, while I'm stuck in the Twilight Zone or wherever the hell I've ended up, I've decided to look over the fortress stacks real quick. Uh, while we're the richest fort I've ever seen, um, well, the richest mortal fort, uh, <laughs> uh, we also seem to have a lot of food as well. The problem? We are almost out of booze. We're almost out of fucking booze! You know how hard it is to be a zombie? Try being a sober zombie. I managed to find some and pour it down my neck hole, but um, I think most of it went into my spine. An elven caravan from Pfizer Eileen has arrived. Hey, uh, elves! Maybe they'll have some booze. I mean, they're always hanging out with plants and stuff. The merchants need a trade depot to unload their goods. Uh, uh guys, guys, no, it's it's over here. Just okay. Just hang a left and. Or, or, or you can just sit there on the edge of our territory. Man, elves are pretty fucking stupid. I tried giving them the finger, but um, it fell off. Speaking of the trade depot, this thing was full of fresh meat and supplies like wood. But it was all forbidden. I ordered all of it to be carried inside before it spoils. What the hell have you guys been doing down here the entire time? I... I I mean, I totally know, because I was in the afterlife watching you. <laughs> right. And, and, and just what the hell is this here? This entire hallway is full of levers and stone mugs. I'd try pulling the levers to see what they do, but I'm afraid it'll cause a volcanic eruption or collapse the roof on me, or unleash some sort of Lovecraftian horror, given the design of this place. It's time to get this place in shape. I I, I mean, really, I don't need a map to get to the frickin' dining room, you know. I was supposed to come down here with a request from the afterlife to create something, but first we gotta fix this place up. Starting with... A still has been ordered to brew many, many drinks. Yes, that will do nicely. Now, create more beer! Beer. 
Also, um, someone, please get me some iron chains to rattle. That would be good. I start off this portion of my journal where I left off, boggled over the sheer insanity of this fort's design. There's a huge area here of nothing but stairs. Stairs that lead nowhere. The bottom and top of these staircases lead straight into solid stone. I am fucking baffled. Uh, well, uh, back on to somewhat more important matters. It seems a dwarf called Phalius has been moping around the fort mumbling to himself for weeks. People warn me he's unstable and severely depressed. I'm starting to wonder why he isn't currently chained up in a jail cell. Away from us. The nobles have also been whining about, um, well, everything. White Cloak wants bucklers made for some damn reason, even though shields are way better, and won't stop asking for them in groups of three. Worst yet, the other mandate was for clear glass items. I'd slap my face with my palm, but I'm afraid I'd drop my head. I've also appointed myself head of the guard, as you can see. Why not? I, I, I mean, the position was open, and I have this big fuck-off axe. However, I do not have a sealed room full of random dogs, puppies, and golden statues of dogs and puppies. Someone here does, though. I tried to look for a way in, but the only thing it has is one window. I gotta wonder what those dogs eat. Robot Uprising Akmam Kilob, Odd Job, has died in the heat. Around this time, Robot Uprising decided to see how tribute works on the inside. I also noticed a small room that I never knew existed before, full of wounded and dying war dogs, as well as these two. They'll most likely survive with those injuries, but I have to wonder how they were injured in the first place. A few other peasants crowding the area have mild wounds as well, but nothing requiring bed rest. Frog the Second has mild injuries on his left hand and left upper leg. Frederick Name Paints has his right upper arm lightly injured. Speaking of bed rest, I found this huge, luxurious bedroom, dining room, and throne room all unoccupied. Guess who got new digs? Go on, you get three guesses. Can't go wrong with that. The Countess Ficod Keithine Erith has arrived. Moments later, this bitch shows up and demands I hand over the new place to her. That's perfect, really. What excellent timing, your majesty. Here, I'll just hand over my awesome new personal castle that nobody wanted until you got here. Give me a few days and I'll even have the masons install running water. On a lighter note, things are looking up for our booze stockpiles. A skeletal mountain goat is menacing orange soda. Oh, oh, fuck off. No, bad goat. Bad. No treats. Bad goat. After a brief wrestle, I chucked that bastard over the cliff. It landed on its legs, took a step, then collapsed into a pile of bones. I'm not exactly sure why that didn't happen when it hit the ground, but who cares? By the way, the elves are still waiting for us to build a trade depot, which we already have, with a path to it. I think they may be mentally retarded. Crackmaster Bimbolil, Fortress DJ, is taken by a fey mood. While beatboxing in a random hallway and breakdancing, Crackmaster, the Fortress DJ, suddenly began screaming about how he's got it, and that he's going to make it, and how awesome it will be. I quickly order the guards to trail his crazy ass as he runs for a leatherworking shop and begins to gather materials. Oh, oh, he's making stuff. I tell the guards that we might have to let him live. Phileas Dodok Gisek is stricken by melancholy. Also, before he had a stroke of genius, it turns out that Crackmaster served Phalius, finally breaking his already weak psyche into a million pieces. He is wandering the fort, sulking, refusing to eat or drink. The leatherworks is overflowing with items, including gems, leather, bones, and shells. 
Dear God, Crackmaster, how much stuff do you need? And he still isn't done gathering materials. While Crackmaster hoards things like a mouse on speed, I'd like to draw your attention to this. This is White Cloak's fifth mandate in a row for bucklers. Yes, fifth. He hasn't stopped asking for more bucklers. He's pretty cool, though, because for some reason, it seems he gets his ass down to the forge and makes the bucklers himself most of the time. I don't know why, but he can have his bucklers if he keeps that up. An artifact has been made. Norem Gatiz Bukit Nebel Sanad. Relieved Fondled, the quick admirer of mourning. This is a dog leather high boot. All craft dwarf ship is of the highest quality. It is encrusted with citrine, brown zircon, and andesite, and decorated with dog leather and turtle shell. This object is adorned with hanging rings of donkey leather and menaces with spikes of brown zircon and microcline. On the item is an image of a dwarf and dwarves in mountain goat bone. The dwarf is surrounded by the dwarves. Crackmaster made this boot, which, um, given the title and image on it, I don't want to know, okay? Crackmaster can keep the damn boot. I just do not want to hear about it. Relieved fondled the quick morning, or whatever he calls it. I'm also making a note to stay far away from his personal quarters at all times, if possible. On a final note, it turns out we have no masons, none at all, well, um, no engravers, at least. These four peasants have been promoted to an engraving and masonry team. Lava is flowing near superweapon Manx. I awoke today to the smell of various burning objects and panicked shouts. Also, I think the vague meowing of cats. Taking a look out the front door of the fort, at least I think it's the front, I witnessed a cascade of lava pouring from above and forming a large pool outside the trade depot, setting various objects on fire. Quite a few questions entered my mind. One, why has this stone chute above broken open to douse the area in lava? Two, who the hell would make this? Reports came in that this tribute weapon had broken open further down as well, spewing lava onto the sands in a, uh, thankfully remote part of our lands. As far as I can guess, the stone walls of this thing are starting to melt or crumble away, which is bad. If the whole thing comes down over the fort, we are totally fucked. It'll be lava baths for all of us, and dwarves hate baths. The cat cage is overflowing. The meowing source was equally disturbing. A single cage crammed full of over a dozen cats and kittens on a precarious ledge above an underground river. The ledge is surrounded by walls, so nobody can actually get to the cage. As far as I can guess, someone was trying to drown the stray cats. Phileas Dodogisek, alias's whore sister, has died in the heat. At this point, Phileas charged by me, sobbing uncontrollably and babbling about something, before leaping up and diving into the spreading lava pool head first. I give him an 8.5, at best. A mule has been strucken by melancholy. Wait, what? Oh, uh, it seems like the elves were too stupid to leave. They eventually went crazy from starvation and sleep deprivation, animals included. Now they just mope around outside, looking for a way to kill themselves. Here's a tip. Find a large, angry, undead bat. Trust me. A rough water block wall stands near the entrance of head shoots. Later, I discovered that head shoots defies both the laws of nature and physics. These walls by the dog chamber are made completely out of water. I, I figured I was drinking too much at first, or not enough. Either way, I won't be setting foot in Wacky Water World, lest a thirsty dwarf drink us into a cave-in. Hey kids, it's Question Corner with Orange Soda! Rotinaj posted, Have I been redwarfed? And as what, if so? Rotinaj Eribdodok, Rotinaj Gorge Clasped. 
has been happy lately. She likes cobaltite, gold, star ruby, horn, pigtail fabric, the color lilac, and idols. When possible, she prefers to consume plump helmets. She absolutely detests lizards. Royal W posted, Just chiming in here to give a big high five to the tribute weapon art. I think I have a new desktop. I'm also curious if Royal II has managed to find his way to the fort yet, and if so, what he's up to. Keep up the ah! Royal II Moru Lural, Royal II Page Clothes, Electric Boogaloo, has been quite content lately. They like native platinum, tin, veriskite, amber, hoods, scepters, and cows for their haunting moos. When possible, she prefers to consume char, dwarven rum, and dwarven syrup. She absolutely detests purring maggots. Evil Kool-Aid Man posted, Oh yeah, I just read the whole thread and damn, this place is fucking hilarious! And just a huge travesty waiting to happen again, oh yeah! Also, requesting dwarfing, so I can see an ASCII version of myself. Run amok! Evil Kool-Aid Man Delarodom, Evil Kool-Aid Man Steel Cloisters, Oh yeah! Has been happy lately. She admired a fine bed lately. She likes Felsite, Trifle Pewter, Blue Jade, Ivory, Flasks, Horses for their strength, and Lizards for their beauty. When possible, she prefers to consume Dwarven Ale and Cow's Milk. She absolutely detests toads. All right, kids, question time is over. Now shut the hell up.